I've been composing since I was 10. I'm now 31 years old, so I've been writing for 20 years, which is a wild thing to even think about. In that time, I've studied many different ways of composing and many different types of composing, different instruments. I've written for the orchestra, I've written for opera. I haven't done some of the more mainstream things like film scoring. Uh, I don't write songs or pop music. But I wanted to put together a video where I talk a little bit about how I compose and maybe pass on some tips to people who are new to composing and just for people who have an interest in knowing more about what it takes to compose and how composers work. Before I do anything to do with musical craft, I start just with an idea. What is the piece going to be about? Who's it for? Why am I writing it? Generally for me, these are themes that are political. They might have to do with my life experience. They often have to do with my sexuality. I've explored a lot of ancient Greek myths in the past, and I like displaying the history of LGBTQIA um, in my music. So that's usually the first thing I do is find what is the piece going to look at and focus on. From there, I spend a lot of time thinking. I'll think about these topics and ideas for a long time. In some instances, like my opera Orpheus, I thought about this for probably two years before I actually put any pen to paper. So it's a long, long process. I often do a lot of research as well. So I'll read academic work, I'll read poetry that might be around the idea that I'm exploring, and I'll listen to a lot of music that might explore similar themes um, or just be aesthetic music that I like that has a similarity to the piece that I want to write. The what and why is really important. So if I'm writing a piece for a colleague or a good friend, uh, it's really important that I write something that they are going to take pride in and really value to perform. If I'm writing something that is being a commission, of course, that has a very different approach because you're being paid for your ideas. And you also, I think, need to factor in who is commissioning the work. They might have um, an anniversary or an idea that they want to have inside the piece. So I've often written works that have included um, suggestions to music that that person likes, or perhaps it's got text from a particular poet that that person uh, really admires. Once I've done all this thinking, I then move into a phase that I call options. What I do in this phase is figure out who it's for. Uh, so that would include what instrument is it written for? What performance environment is it written for? So is it being written um, for a concert hall? Is it being written as a piece of theater? Is it being written for a school um, environment? And then I start figuring out the options. And I think composition is so much about choosing options and making choices. So I'm writing a work at the moment for oboe, bassoon and piano. So there I've got options uh, of three different instruments. I could do a solo oboe, I could do a solo bassoon, I could do a solo piano. I could have duets, so little woodwinds duets between the bassoon and the oboe and or the piano and one of the wind instruments. Or of course the piano has so many notes, I've got such a range of sounds that I can pick from the piano, while an oboe and a bassoon are just a solo line instrument. So I make these big graphs where I will pick um, out all the elements that I want to look at. Um, do I want to put the oboe high and sweet in the, in the higher register, or do I want it to play loud and rambunctious in its lower register? So they're all choices that I have to make. If I'm writing something with voice, uh, I have to, of course, choose a text and figure out how I'm going to set the text. Where is the energy going to go in the stress of the wording? What is the person singing about? Are they singing as a character or are they making a commentary on something? Also, what I do in this phase is write out the structure of the work. So if I want the work to be 10 minutes long or 20 minutes long, no matter what the length is, I'll generally write out a rough guide of where the peaks and troughs of the climaxes will be in the piece. That'll then give me a sense of the architecture and the maths that is behind the work. So perhaps I want the first climax to be about five minutes into a 10 minute work. It then dissolves away for a few more minutes before leading to a next uh, climax. 
that gives me an uh, amount of time and space that I need to fill with musical ideas. The other thing that I'll be doing in this uh, options phase is choosing the harmonic language. Now by that I mean the actual notes that I'm going to use to write the piece. I go into a lot of detail with my choice of harmonies and I do uh, this series of experiments when I'm bored where I'll grab um, intervals or chords and I do this exploratory thing almost improvising with those pitches to find all the multipliers and options that I can pick within those relationships. I've developed this technique through many years of uh, writing out different scales and different um, intervallic relationships and, and writing works with those different little subsets and then listening back and seeing what I like and what I enjoy. And a big part of my music is creating sounds that I find interesting and that I think are beautiful or um, dramatic. The writing process itself is split up into two uh, different sections for me. The first, I will write by hand, and this may take many different forms. Um, it could be in a full score like this, where I sit down and write the entire piece as I have thought it in my head. It may take uh, the place of a score like this, where I use um, one of these really cool pens that Stravinsky used. Um, so you can use it to draw five staves on it and uh, you can do it on any piece of paper which is really really useful because sometimes this manuscript, the normal manuscript, is a bit um, constricting. The other way I will then write is in a short score format so often if I'm writing um, vocal music I will write out the vocal line first uh, and then I will write um, what I have ideas for the other instruments around it. I always use, um, when I'm writing this sort of score, I always use a ruler to rule out the lines. I'm not necessarily like super pedantic about it, but um, I often will come back to these scores and not understand them, so I really need to make sure that they're as clear as possible. I have a very particular penchant for pencils, and my favourite are Blackwing pencils, particularly these ones, the 602s. Um, they are such good quality and when you rub out there's no smudges or leftovers. It's really um, the best quality, I, I think. But my hack would be I do also use um, some pencils that I picked up from Daiso. So if you're in Australia you've probably heard of Daiso, the sort of cheap um, import Japanese company. And they actually have a surprisingly good range of stationery. Once I've done this work on these short scores, or in, um, not that often, but occasionally I will handwrite full scores like this, the next step for me is then putting it into Sibelius, which is a music software system. So often um, I end up with scores that look like this. So this is an orchestral work, my most recent symphony. And what you'll see in it is there's a lot of edits and changes. So I'll often try, uh, I'll go through a draft stage um, where I'll print these scores off and I'll go through with a fine tooth comb to pick out anything that uh, may be incorrect or needs updating or changing. When I'm in this phase of writing at the computer, I do often change things. So it doesn't mean that what I've written on handwritten like this is the final product. Um, that's usually more the ideas phase and the actual nuts and bolts composition in terms of writing and developing ideas. But yeah, I generally do that at the computer. Um, and I have worked like that ever since I was like 11. So it's a process that uh, I find really intuitive and really works for me. Um, the, I th really think the handwriting and the computer writing are two very different things and I think about the music that I'm creating in very different ways. Often when I'm handwriting something I think about it in my head as a singer or a clarinetist and so I'm limited by those techniques. When I'm writing something at the computer, I might, might or often study other scores or have other reference scores there if I'm looking at particular effects or techniques or structures that I'm wanting to replicate. A great tip I was given when writing um, is to find things that you like and that you like the look of and that you like the sound of and don't be afraid to repeat it. So I think it's really important that uh, you, you know what you like 
and that means that you need to listen and study a lot of scores and a lot of different types of music. I think it's also really important that you listen to every type of music that you can get your hands on. And I think it is important to also listen to things that you don't like and make sure that uh, you're exposing yourself to as many different types of music as possible. Another great tip I was given by the amazing Australian composer Lisa Lim is look at how you write something and look at what you often do in your writing in terms of um, things that you repeat all the time in your music. So like I often bookend big sections with silence and she suggested that I should just remove those silences and try and write in a transition or try and have abrupt changes or just do something different than what you normally do. And that's a great challenge for any person who writes any creative material. I think the final stage is, and it's almost separate in itself to composing, is orchestration. People don't quite understand that that's almost like two separate things. What I might write here on the score, either handwritten or even sometimes on the computer, isn't necessarily the fully realised score for the instruments. I then have to go and write it out if it's an orchestral work for each individual instrument and I've got to think about the uh, abilities of that instrument. Can it play that high? Can it play a soft note like that, that low on the instrument? Um, and then you've got all the technical things that go around that. Once you've worked on your orchestration, the next thing that you need to really get your score ready for is a rehearsal or a workshop. As I said before, I will print out a, many drafts of the score and go through with a fine tooth comb and edit and edit and edit with lots of pens and lots of colours and lots of different things. And so I end up having a lot of paper floating around. But the goal will be to have one final draft that I can circulate to the musicians that I am working with. Those initial workshops are so, so important. And if you've got a smartphone, my advice is to record those and to listen back every chance that you get uh, to pick up anything that either didn't work or that needs changing and updating. And don't be afraid to go back into rehearsals or to email or however you're communicating with your musicians and tell them what you want. Don't be afraid to stand up for your own music. Often we get um, so overwhelmed with the fact that we have something performed at all that it's uh, we let things slide um, and we need to make sure that we're really confident and happy in the music that we've written and the sounds that we want the instrumentalists or musicians to make. Of course, when you're rehearsing, you're often rehearsing for a performance. So there's been many times I've had to do last minute revisions and even big changes to works before the performance date. And that is, of course, incredibly stressful. Um, so be prepared for sometimes big uphill battles and a lot of uh, time back at the computer, uh, rewriting things into the wee hours of the night. But of course, you've got to have uh, the final result in mind. Uh, and that's what keeps you, keeps your drive going. I would also make sure that you keep notes during rehearsals, clear notes in a notebook about ideas that you're having for other pieces. Because inevitably when you're hearing these sounds for the first time, you think, oh my God, I could pull that bar out and write a whole new piece from it. Um, and often those thoughts disappear in the excitement of a rehearsal. So just make sure you're taking notes. I think it's also really important at the end of big rehearsal days to think about the work, um, again, in notation form, what worked, what didn't work, what would you improve uh, for the next piece? Because inevitably one piece uh, will feed into the next piece. I can basically trace a line from my big major works that I wrote during my university years, uh, which was over 10 years ago, to the major works that I'm writing now. And each one, there's a leapfrog of a musical idea from the other one that I've gone into the next piece to develop. So I do think it is really important and really fascinating to see the development of your musical ideas through your career, through each piece that you explore. So I hope that gives you a little bit of an insight into the way that I compose. I think it's so amazing the diversity of composers that we have in the world. Um, and I mean songwriters, um, orchestrators, um, composers of classical music, composers of film scores. I think it's really, really exciting and, and the rich tapestry of music that's out there to listen to um, keeps me going anyway. Uh, I hope that uh, you will tune in next week for another video and please go out there and listen to as much new music as you can.